Hello, we're back with another exciting, it is exciting, uh, episode of uh, various discussions dealing with Google applications, um, Google Apps, Gmail, Calendar, and different things. Today, I want to talk about Google Keep. Uh, yesterday, Google announced, yesterday being the end of March of 2015, announced a new version uh, with some new features of Google Keep. And um, I just wanted to, before we start actually with the all the details, I wanted to say that as we go forward and you watch some of my videos, uh, be mindful of the date because Google keep constantly releasing new versions of the software. And so some of the prior videos may be somewhat outdated because of that. So just always keep that in mind that when you're watching videos, if you're watching something that's fairly old, be mindful of the fact that probably the software is somewhat changed and the videos don't automatically get changed, deleted, they just kind of stay there because there's still value in the uh, original videos. They do point out a lot of things that may not be pointed out in this video. But just be mindful of that when you're looking at dates and looking at videos dealing with the same subject matter, uh, be mindful of the dates to make sure that you're looking at the the later the date, the, the, the more features you're going to get, so, so to speak. So that's all. So with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, why don't we just go ahead and jump right into it. And I'm going to today do it a little bit differently. I'm going to first talk about uh, general features for those of you who have not potentially seen Google Keep yet. I'm sure there are some people out there who haven't uh, played with it or haven't seen it. Uh, and also we'll get into the new features as well. So we're going to cover everything today, although we're going to kind of go quickly over the existing features because you can watch prior videos where I go in a lot more detail about that because today it's all about all the new features and those are the cool ones. All right, so to get uh, into Google Keep, you simply pull up a uh, browser, preferably from like all Google stuff, you, you're better off using Chrome. Uh, although you don't have to, but it's, it works nicer. And uh, we go to triple W. But uh, actually, let's just go to keep. So if you type that in, then Google Keep will come up in just a few seconds. And it looks like a colorful little board, as you can see. Okay? And so basically, you know real basic use of Google Keep is, the beauty of it, I should say, is simplicity. All you have to do is start typing, where it says up there, add the note, you just start typing. This is, and uh, once you type it in, it goes in there. You can also add the title, which will be in boldface. And this is all as much as you need to do to just get a note out there. And if you hit the escape key or you click anywhere outside or you click on the done um, button here, any of those will do the same thing. It'll just dump the note right there to go with all the other notes. So that's the basic, real simple use as you can see. It takes a second to describe it and a second to use it. Very simple. Okay, in addition to that, uh, you can have a number of options, which are also pretty simple, but um, allow you to do a lot more than just type in some text. What you can do is you can also create a checklist. And at the bottom here, you can see that they have this little toolbar. If you click on the pull-down menu here, you have an option called Show Checkboxes. If you click on it, all of a sudden now this item looks, it has a little checkbox next to it. So I can put another item here. And you can put as many, you just keep entering, keep hitting, enter, keep adding things. In addition to that, you can also, as you can see, when you start hovering over it, it's got a little um, drag bar on the left side there, with those little dots, which means you can take any item and you can just simply grab on it and move it wherever you want it to move it. So you can easily rearrange these um, items here in the checklist. Also, of course, as you can imagine, if you're done with something, you just click on it and it moves it down to the bottom with the crossed out and it's got checkbox checked and you can see it's checked and the other items remain so as you get things done they just all move down so they don't disappear they simply move down to get it out of your way and if you decided that you want to put it back you just simply unclick it it goes right back to the top of the list so very simple to set up like a shopping list or a list of to-do items 
or you know anything else you can imagine. Very, very simple very quick. So that's the second thing. You can, those are the two main things that you usually do. You do either free form text or you do uh, checkbox item listing. In addition to that, they give you some other options down at the bottom. One of the thing, options you can do is if you click on this uh, hover over the uh, little palette here and click on any of these colors, you will notice that the background will change to the color. So I can make it to orange, I can make it blue, whatever I want it to be. You don't have to use colors, but it's a way to segregate information or have you uh, basically have attention um, for a specific meaning of the word. For example, maybe you have all your family notes be in blue. Or, or you are, uh, you're working on a new project, your current project notes are all in red, the red background. So you, you can, you know, assign anything you want to these colors. And uh, it makes it really easy and convenient to quickly pull up. I'll show you later how you can just pull up all the orange ones or all the blue ones. And uh, Makes, makes it easy when you start putting a lot of notes in, you can see that they kind of bunch up, like in my case, I get a bunch of notes. And so if you keep doing this and you keep uh, adding more and more notes, you need to be able to easily segregate them into um, something more meaningful to you than just everything like the barrage of stuff. And, um, and that's how you do it with one possibility to do with colors. Okay, also what you can do is when you get done with a note, uh, Another thing you can have at the bottom here is uh, this little folder or drawer, I should say, uh, icon, and that basically archives it. So if you are done with a particular note, you don't want to delete it, you just want to move it out of the way so it's not in your face, but at the same time, still available, searchable, everything else, you simply archive it. And so if I click on this archive button, as you can see, it'll disappear, and it says your note archived here it says undo so I can easily undo it and it's going to bring it right back and the archive is available from the left side here menu up at the top if you click on the uh, where it says notes you got all these different options which we'll cover in a minute but the main thing is uh, that I want to show now is just if you go to archive then you see all your archived notes um, visible and then if you're done with them you can just go back at any point in time and jump back to notes so it's pretty simple to jump between archive and unarchive and like i said the only difference is just things you see in front of your face without going anywhere or things that are out there that you're done with. so you think of it as kind of a done similar to gmail I mean, it's the same concept as gmail with archiving emails okay in terms of other features uh, on the desktop version you know there's desktop version and there's mobile version and there's, they're definitely different. There's definitely a difference between the two. Even though it's the same app, at the same time, it's a different app. So bear with me, we'll go through that. So for the desktop version, one of the things you can do uh, here is you can, uh, and mobile, like in this particular case, both desktop and mobile have that capability. You can easily add pictures. So if you pull up a note, or down here you see it says add image, you can just go and, you know, up whatever image you want, I'll just grab an image, put something in there, and it's going to load it, and it's going to be kind of ghosted like this until it actually loads it. Once it loads, it becomes nice and bright and vivid. And if you want to add more pictures, you just simply click on the same button again and pull up another image, and it's going to stack them together. And you can, you know, even pull in multiple. I believe it will let you pull in multiple images at a time. Let's try this. So if you hit the, the control key, then it'll let you, yeah, see, so it just keeps adding them and adding them and adding them, so you got all these images as part of this one note. So you can have one image, or you can have multiple images. And at any point in time, you can click, you can click on the little X at the bottom here of each picture to get rid of it. You can click on an image, anywhere on the image, to pull it up uh, into this viewer. And at this point, when it's up, you can you can see at the top here, there's an icon for print. So you can print it if you wish, just the image alone. And you can scroll by clicking on the left and right navigation. So once Google Plus, you can scroll through pictures. So it makes it very convenient to just jump through them. And at the same time, all the pictures are there. And it makes it very convenient to be able to keep track of not only textual, but also image information at the same time. 
so that's that's I guess we'll cover the the other icons as well. Might as well do that now. Um, the other icon that's important here that they've had before. So right now we're talking about features they've had before. I'm not showing you a new features just yet. And that is the share capability. If you click on the little man with the plus next to him, it'll allow you to put an email of the person you want to share it with. And so I just put it in there, and then the image of the person, if they have a profile, will come up. You can have multiple people, and that means all these people who are on the list, which will show up here down at the bottom, in the little circles in the profile pictures, would allow you to go ahead and um, and and uh, have all these people be able to collaborate on this uh, same note at any time. So it makes it very convenient, for example, to, let's say, had a... Um, like a dashboard of different tasks that you're, you have several nodes, each node representing a particular project, and the project has a bunch of list items that people are supposed to work on, and you want to just kind of keep an eye on where they're at, so they check off things as they get them done, and at the same time, this is a shared note between you and them, so you can add more items to it, they can add more items to it, they can check off what, what's done, they can delete things, so both of you can be seeing it at your convenience, looking at the same list. And at the same time, both are able to maintain it and make changes, things like that. So it makes it very convenient for a manager, for example, to collaborate with a bunch of people that are located in anywhere. I mean, different cities, different states, different countries, doesn't really matter. But then you just pull up a list and you know, there's all the items for that particular deal, the project name will go into the, where the title is. And you know, all the different items here indicate where they're at and then what they've done. So it's a very nice way to manage somebody, even long distance, like I mentioned, uh, and being able to, for both parties, to be able to easily see where things are at, what else needs to be done, how much stuff has been done. And you can have multiple cards like this for each person, and then the manager can, you know, they have five different people they need to manage. Each card represents a different person, and, and you, can, of course, can have multiple people on the same card. So it makes it very convenient to do that kind of stuff by using this share capability. And the last thing here is we have a little reminder. If you can see, it says remind me. If I stick, click on the reminder, I can tell it I want to do it later today or I want to do it tomorrow. Or I can specifically pick date and time when I want to be reminded. And I can just indicate that I want to be reminded on November, sorry, March, let's say, 31st. And uh, I want to be, I want it to be in the morning, 9 a.m. You can also specify a specific time. That's it. You just put in date and time. And now the reminder is set. So now it's going to go ahead and uh, remind me on that date and time on my phone and come up on my desktop, um, which is a very, very convenient option. Another feature of this reminder thing that's extremely convenient also for some things is if you're making shopping lists and you're putting different things in different cards uh, or even the same card, and you want to be, it's a shopping list for something you're going to be buying at Costco. So you keep adding to the list, maybe multiple people are adding to the list. And, but you don't know when you're going to be at the at cost uh, exactly. So what you do then, if that's the case, what you do is you pick a place. I have another feature here allowing you to uh, specify a place. And for the place, you indicate, uh, say, I'm going to go to Costco. Uh, located here in Kirkland, Washington. So I select that particular Costco location. As you can see, it comes up with the address, and I save it. So now this reminder will come up only when I'm at Costco. And so, of course, with desktop computers, it's irrelevant because they don't move anywhere. But with mobile version of the application, it becomes essential because when you're driving, obviously your GPS is on. On your phone, I should say obviously, but if it is on, then uh, when you get to Costco, it will remind you of that one. So it's a very powerful feature to be able to uh, get reminders both uh, for date and time, specific date and time, and also be location-based on GPS. So that's kind of basic usage and features of uh, Google Keep as it is. And the mobile application has had the ability to share. You know, one thing you can do here is you can share uh, this node with a specific other application. And that's something the mobile allowed you to do before. So you can share it using that one. But now we're entering a whole new set of things here. And that's what I want to go over. So let, let me pull up this feature here. List. I just put in this feature so I don't forget to tell you anything. And as you can see, I have this node, so we went over the simple node use. Uh, we'll put it at the 
the bottom and checklist we covered. And this I don't want to talk about now because it's mobile. We'll move it down to mobile section, so I'll tell you later. And there's another mobile. So as you can see, it's very easy to move things around and uh, to organize, reorganize things how you, how you see fit. Um, let's see. So let's talk about um, labels right now. Okay, so one of the new features they added yesterday was labels. And what it means, it simply means if you know how to use labels in Gmail, you know exactly how these work. It's exactly the same kind of capability. Essentially, what it means is you can pull down the menu from the note, and you can say that you want to add a label right here. When you click on Add Label, it says, what label do you want me to use? It gives you a choice of all these labels already. You can just search for one of the ones you have, or you can add a new one. So if I type in label, Yes, for example, it tells me that it's not there. It says, do you want to create it? So I'm going to create it. And so as you can see now, that if I look down here at the note itself, down here at the bottom, we can make the screen a little bit bigger. You can see at the bottom of this note here, it says training by PCS. So that's a label that's been added. So now if I go over to search and I type in training, it immediately will come up with this note as one of the notes that matches the word because I have the word training in this label. Okay? And that makes it, of course, extremely easy to find things if you organize things by, by searching. But in addition to that, I can also, on the left side here, pull down the menu and find the label called training by PCS. And if I click on it, it's going to immediately come back only with this one card because that's the only one, one note, I should say. That's the only one that actually has that um, label assigned to it. In addition to that, you cannot, don't, you don't have to have only one label. You can assign as many labels as you want. So if I go to change labels and I want to say that particular label should be that plus fork, then it will come up both in search and using this approach, but at the same time, let's go back to uh, just all notes. And you can see here, just scroll down a little bit here, and you've got these both of these labels at the bottom. So the fact that the labels are there, they're visible, I mean, it's useful, but what makes it super useful is the ability to just jump to a particular label by simply clicking on it, and then you will have nothing but uh, notes that come up that match that particular label. It's a very, very powerful feature to be able to segregate things. And what I want to point out here is segregation um, like this, using one label or more labels, up to you how you want to do it, but it's, it's very convenient to be able to say, I want to keep track of things by people, and I want to keep track of things by projects. Because you can have a completely different set of nodes dealing with both of those entities, they're not necessarily the same. And so you might have a project where somebody who is working under you is part of it, but also they deal with you on some other projects as well. So if you want to easily um, be able to pull up all the nodes dealing with a person, then you simply have a label with that person's name and any note that it makes sense uh, to have that person be associated with that particular node, you simply assign that label with the person. At the same time, project-wise, you only assign nodes to a project that, that are that. So that allows you to have this complete differentiation between how you pull in a set of nodes that could be the same, but they can also be completely different. Because, like I said, you can be basing things, you can be, in terms of some ideas, you can be basing things based on dates. For example, let's say you need to keep track of things based on quarters or based on, on a monthly basis. So you're putting in all the different receipts, you're taking pictures of receipts, and you're putting all these receipts into the system, but you want to segregate them by month. So you set up a label called January, you set up a label called February, and so on and so forth, and you simply assign this label to, to the nodes as you put them in. That way you can easily jump and just look at the subset called January to see nothing but uh, your receipts for January. So for accounting purposes, obviously it makes it a very, very convenient and useful feature to be able to easily segregate things using that kind of approach. And so with that 
you can just think of just about anything you can imagine, how you want to group things, you assign it one or more labels. And I don't know if they have any limit of how many labels you can assign, but my guess is they probably, you can probably put as many labels as you want. So if you really kind of creatively think about it, it's a very, very useful capability to be able to segregate these nodes in, in uh, Google Keep uh, in just about any way you can imagine. You can use labels to do it. Before, you had to do it with colors. You segregate things by different colors. Well, let's back up a little bit. On the topmost level, you can segregate things by Google accounts. Because if I go and change my, um, if I change my account here to a different account, then the Google Keep will show up like a totally different set of cards. Okay, so I can add another account, jump into that, and it's going to be a totally separate set of cards. Each Google Keep is associated with a Google account. So since I have multiple Google accounts, I can have multiple sets of Google Keep nodes. So that's one way to segregate information. Another way to segregate, of course, is the colors. That's what they had before. You use different colors to assign some kind of meaning to them, and then you can easily segregate by just selecting the color, which I'll show you in a minute how to do that. But that was very limited because the colors were only there were only eight colors you can use to choose from. So if you need to segregate things in a variety of different ways, especially using multiple criteria, you didn't have any way to do it. Now with the, with the way they have labels set up, you can't, and that's and that's that's why it's so slick to be able to do that. So moving on here. As I showed you, when you do reminders, uh, let's go back to pick a different, let's say, do it today, database reminder. And one of the things that they just added is called repeating recurring reminders. Is at the bottom here, notice that it says does not repeat. If you pull this down, it, it has several more options. It has uh, ability to say, in addition, does not repeat daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or custom. So in custom, if you click on custom, it's a similar to Google Calendar type deal where you can indicate that you want to do it every so. So often, you know, after so many occurrences, ending, uh, you know, so the basic variations of how you want to repeat it. But the cool thing about this is that a lot of times you want to set up a reminder, and then if you don't get it done, you want to remind yourself the next day again. Or you want to set up something for example, where uh, you're going to be doing things on a weekly basis, uh, I don't know, taking the garbage out, whatever you decide to do. And so you want it to be reminded all the time without setting up reminders. So that's what, what makes this really good. You just set it up to say, I want to be reminded on a weekly basis and uh, every week is going to come up at that date. I mean, every week at that time is going to come up with a reminder. And so these recurring reminders are definitely excellent tool for business purposes uh, you can set up checklists for employees for example when they come in they need to do certain number of things based on your operating procedures uh, or SOPs as they call them and uh, that makes it perfect because you can have a list of all the things that the person needs to get done every morning you set up a recurring reminder to be reminded every morning and um, that's it basically every every morning it's going to automatically remind them you don't have to once you set it up Kind of set it up and let it go, and that's what it's going to be doing. So very convenient feature, very useful for other things. Let's check that off and move on later. Okay, another thing that they've just added yesterday, which was phenomenal, is yes, as you can see here, is a little test I did with Mark Mark Boris, who uh, set up a little note, and if you share it with me, as I showed you, using the little share capability here, and. Um, you know, I wrote some things, he wrote something, so it works fine. But it doesn't really have the depth and the capabilities of sharing the way Google Docs have it. Nor does it have the editing capability here. You can't format stuff, you cannot make things bold, you cannot change colors of the text, you cannot drop images. And so, I mean, there's many, many things you cannot do. It's supposed to be a simple note-taking tool, which it does a great job doing that. But if you wanted to get more, if you want to start at this point, but then make it much more um, capable and you know, formatted in a different way and so on and so forth, you probably need to go to something like a Google Doc to do it. And so this allows you to start small by even taking a picture and then from there, take it from there. So here what I can do is I can take um, this very note, for example, that we have here as an example, just use that. And what I can do is down at the bottom here, if I go to its menu, if 
I go to its menu here at the bottom, you can see there is an option called Copy to Google Doc. Doc. And so I click on Copy to Google Doc, and it says Copy to Google Doc, and it takes a couple of seconds, and then it says Open Doc. So I click on Open Doc just to show you what it did. And as you can see, it names it the same way as I had my note named. It drops the image in here. Of course, we have multiple images. We drop multiple images in here. At the same time, it drops all my uh, items here as uh, bullet points with the things that are done, marking them. And so at this point, I can just go to town and do whatever I want. I can change, you know, mess around with the picture, do whatever I want, including deleting it. I can move it somewhere else if I wanted to. I can change the text, you know, get rid of some text. Uh, I can you know, make it bold. I mean, the usual stuff you can do with, with the Google Docs, you can now do with this. And of course, that does not mean it's going to change anything on the actual note. Note is completely separate from this. It's just a way to transfer information easily uh, and then to start working on it afterwards. So it's a very, very convenient feature because another thing it gives you, in addition to just dumping the content into Google Doc is it allows you to start using much more, more capable sharing capability. Because now not only are you just simply sharing where both people can be working on that particular note or more than two people, you can now have ability to do very granular sharing like you do in Google Docs and Google Sheets where you can say, I want these people to be able to edit, I want these people to be able to only view, I want these people to be able to only comment. So you get into a whole different capability in terms of security and sharing when you uh, get the document from, you know, uh, put into uh, Google Docs. So much, much more capable, much more sophisticated, and yet you can get into it with a really, really simple approach like this. So that's what this does. And of course, also printing. You know, there is no print button here uh, of this note. There is no capability to just say, I want to print this. Okay? On the mobile thing, you're able to do it if you use uh, something like uh, Google's Cloud Print or any other similar type program. But on the desktop, they don't have a way to just pull up a note and say print it. But now, by simply dumping it into uh, a Google Doc, of course, Google Doc, you can print all day long. So it, it, they won't end up giving you this capability. Even if you're using it for nothing, then to just print, you can just do this extract, and you print it, and then you delete it. Afterwards. So very, very capable. Uh, situation. Okay, now let's move on to uh, the next step, which is the uh, voice recordings. And voice recording is something of mobile only, and we're not talking mobile yet, so let's move it down to mobile. And just look at here and talk about it later. So, what else can you do with, with uh, the this version here? You can also do search. And of course, that's essential because if you want to find any information, it's essential that you be able to search. And um, searching is as simple as clicking in the search at the top here where it says Google Keep, and then typing in um, your search criteria. So in my case, for example, I'll type in the words uh, on the reef or something. And then, of course, I come up with a bunch of notes. Uh, some of them have graphics, some of them this color, some of them that color. All of these uh, notes here are all for the word reef. Okay, and it highlights automatically where this word is. So it makes it very convenient to find just about anything you want. You don't need to be kind of sifting through notes and taking a look at them to do anything. Um, you know, you can easily, you can see the way it looks initially. It kind of looks like a bunch of post-it notes, the way you normally would have it on your desk, on your monitor, everywhere some people have it. Uh, you know, my recommendation, get rid of all your post-it notes, put them all into um, Google Keep here, and you have the same kind of capability, except you can now find anything uh, extremely simple by just typing you know, a few letters or a few words. And that tells you there's seven matching notes, and you can do with them whatever you want that you found. So that's as simple as it is to find anything on the search. And then you click on the X here, the left corner, to uh, exit it out and go back to go back to here. So that's the search capability. Oh yeah, let's let's talk let's search about a little bit more. So in addition to that, to be able to just type in you know basic text, 
Another thing that you have here, when you when I click in the Google Keep search bar, notice that what it comes up with, it comes up with this set of these icons right below it, as soon as I type it, I mean, as soon as I click on it. And what it does, it allows you to click, some of these are used in conjunction with others, some of them are used by themselves. So over here, it says filter by list. So if I click and select, simply select this checklist, it shows me nothing but notes that have checklists as opposed to having notes that have freeform text. So that you can easily get just the list if you want by clicking on that. Also, I have ability, which we'll talk about the mobile, I have ability on the mobile to, to record audio. So you can say pull up everything that has audio and checklist. If I click on checklist off, I only have one card, so it doesn't matter. It shows the same thing, but the idea is you can combine them. So you can see what you use for audio, what you use for that. Also, you can say, show me something that has images. And I'll come up with all the documents that have images. And I can also say, show me images with checklists. So it will only show me those. So it's a way to filter information without even typing anything very easily. As you can imagine, the next one is, show me all the notes that have reminders. So there's all the notes that have reminders. Okay. And if I want to see reminders with the images, then I will see reminders with images. I want to see reminders with images and checklists, then this will come up. So as you can see, it's it's very capable in filtering out things. Also, you can say, show me something that's shared, and it'll immediately come up with everything, all the notes that are shared with somebody else. Okay? And if I type in here the word Oleg, for example, uh, how about if I type in the word Mark? Okay. If I type in the word Mark, you can see only a couple of things come up that include the word uh, word mark in them, and then also that are shared with somebody. So very, very, it doesn't have to be a person's name, it could be anything, but that's how essentially this, this particular part works. So any of these can be combined in any way to be, to be able to filter the search by that criteria. And this, as you can imagine, is a way to come up with only nodes that match the color. So if I wanted, for example, in my case, I have my blue, um, blue colored nodes mean it's something I have to do. So you click on the blue, and then nothing but blue comes up. You click on an orange, and then orange stuff comes up. And click on yellow, yellow stuff comes up. So very, very simple, very convenient. And when you color code stuff, and you remember, or you make a note, like I showed you in a minute, I just made a note, like they called it a legend. It allows you to keep track of which colors represents what. It makes it very simple to be able to filter information that way. So for example, if, my, if I'm looking for what I need to do with Reef, if you put and click on the blue deal, there is all my to-dos dealing with Reef right there. Okay? Because I know all my to-do things are that. Now, does that mean everything I have for Reef is blue? No. I have some white ones. I could have some other ones, too. And notice down the bottom here, I also, it also shows me anything it finds in Archive. It just shows it in a separate area. So it does come up with whatever you select. And you can also filter by specific color and the text. And it combines the two. To, to try to come up with information for you, but it's practically instantaneous when you start typing. Very slick, very convenient. Definitely recommend using it as much as you can use it. And of course, you can also search for labels the same way. There is no right now a separate search just for a label. The way you do labels is you click on them either on the left side or you click on them right in the in the in your note, and it's going to come up with everything that matches that particular label. Okay, so that's the search. Let's go back to this again. This. This. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the search, and then we're going to talk about bookmarks. Um, do I want to go with bookmarks now? No, I don't. I'll talk about the bookmarks before the demo. Okay, so see here we can adjust things because we feel like adjusting, so we adjust them. Makes it very simple. Next thing I want to talk about is floating action buttons and all the stuff having to do with mobile. So I'm going to grab my mobile phone. I'm going to show you the mobile phone here, how it works on mobile phone. So I'm going to see how we're going to orchestrate it. I'm going to get rid of the um, screen share and I'm going to put my phone up here so you can kind of see it like that. Let's see, make sure you're in focus here. That's fairly decent. 
I'm pushing for the Michelle Lisa. Now it's not so decent. I'll try to adjust this thing. Try changing this one second. Okay. So, you know, I have my keep if I click on the home button and click on my key button right there. Then you can see that I got the same form here. And also I wanted to show you that what's happening is every few seconds, uh, Google automatically syncs everything. So as you can see, you know, on that particular post, the floating action, first it says bookmark, and then now it changed to say floating action buttons, mobile only. And that means that's basically it's updating everything in almost real time. It just takes a few seconds. So any changes I make on this uh, device, let's say on the phone, these changes automatically wind up going back to um, the desktop version and every, all, every other instance that you're running of Keep, you don't have to be running at that time, but when you pull it up, it will be updated. So it's updated, it's synced everywhere and updated everywhere. Makes it very, very convenient and useful. Even though some features are different, still we're talking about you know being able to sync everything and, and then be able to use uh, the information at the same time, almost at the same time, the same way, which is very convenient. So on the, on the deal, on the um, Google Keep, the mobile version, you can see on the bottom right here, there's a little uh, similar to Inbox and Gmail now, button floating, start button, not start button, but basically they call it floating something. Uh, if you click on it right there with a little plus on it, it opens up other icons, which you can't really see much. And that's where you can create a, a note, or you can create a checklist, or you can uh, add a photo to start with, or you can record voice. So this is the deal where if I go to do voice, now I'd like to add some new information using my voice. Okay, so let's see how good it did. Okay, now I'd love to add some new information using my way. So, as you can see, it did a not perfect job, but almost perfect job. So, one thing that they've changed from the old version is the old version you can actually play it back as an audio. In this version, it seems like they removed that. The only thing they do is just transcribe it. But it does a pretty good job. If you speak relatively clearly without accent like me, and uh, you speak, you know, reasonably fast. Um, then you can see that the thing comes up and it does a pretty good job and that becomes part of the actual text in the note and that's what it is. So it just creates a new note and you can search for it and have the information and so on. So that's um, that part of it. Everything else the same as on the desktop. If you create something with an image, it's going to put it in the deal, in the note, create a new note with an image and then you can put whatever text you want and it will create. So you can create basically the same content both on the mobile version and the desktop version, everything gets synchronized, everything is in there. If you're uh, wondering if um, if my desktop is the same, let's go ahead and jump for a second to the desktop version. Right there. Let's see, share. And as soon as the desktop version comes up on your end, you will see that there is this, you now would love to add some new information using my voice. So as you can see that you know, it shows exactly the same note that I added on my phone, it shows it on there. So very convenient, very useful, and if you need to record some information using your voice, you can certainly do that. And that's what this floating action button allows you to do. You know, from there you just select it and you do it. Again, remember this is mobile only. You cannot do this, you cannot record your voice uh, using the desktop version at this point, or Chromebook version, same deal. Chromebook, Chromebox. That's like desktop. Okay, the other capability you have is you're able to do the long click to select. On the current desktop version, you can easily click to select multiple um, items here. They added the real nice new deal where you can just point. You can see it shows a little checkbox. So you can click on it to select multiple, multiple notes like that. And then you can act on them, do whatever you want to do, whether you want to 
archive them or you want to change the color on all of them or you want to put reminders in all of them or you can do you can delete all these notes you can change labels on them at the same time so there's quite a few things you can create google docs from them or just make copies of the notes all of this can be done on multiple notes you first select them and then you take some action on them. so that's how that works but on the mobile version the way you know you can't there's nothing you're hovering over so the way they did that is you simply long select long press i should say not long select but long press um uh, Get rid of this, go back to the phone here, and just to show you, so if I click and hold, it, it kind of turns it grayish background. And then if I click on any other ones, it'll also turn them grayish. And it makes a little kind of like a little, um, uh, it doesn't really vibrate, but tiny miniature vibration the first time you select it when you go long press it, like anything else on the phone. And then from there, it just goes. You can see it's got the icons at the top there that uh, allow you to select the actions you want to do. And uh, it says three notes are selected, and you can take whatever action you want to do on these notes, or you can just go back without doing anything. So that's the, the way you select multiple things in um, on the uh, mobile version. Okay, voice recording. Okay, so voice recording, like I mentioned, there you can record them, but they're going to be transcribed automatically, and they're not going to allow you to uh, uh, to simply play them back. One of the problems they had before is they had the playback, but the playback wouldn't work on the PC because they use this kind of funky format for audio. And so what they've done is they uh, initially I had to actually install a special. It was called like GPC or something like that format, the, which is kind of a weird format for audio in terms of when I say weird, it's not standard that everybody is using. So because of that, I had to get a special player to be able to play it and install it. Anyway, it's a bunch of hassle for people to use. I think that's why they, they decided to just forget that. And so they're basically transcribing the voice into text. And then from there, you take it from there to make it simpler. So I think it was a good thing that they did that. And uh, for the most part, it should work pretty well if you want to use it. One of the capabilities on, on the, on the uh, mobile version that's phenomenal that you don't have on the regular version is the ability to share to a different app. And I'll show you in a minute here how useful that is. So, for example, here, if I pull down the menu on the top right, I'm sorry, if I uh, select a note, let me select something you can see better. If I select, for example, this same note we were looking at, right? And if I click on the button I have to do this on the side let's put this one it's okay uh, the menu looks like this As you can see you can delete note add label make a copy send show check boxes and I click on send and then when I click on send it gives me a list of all these different apps that I could be using and as you can see we'll just quickly go through them I can put the same content with graphics you know everything into Google Plus as a post which I can then edit finish, share with whomever I wish. So it's kind of beginning of a Google Plus post. I can also send it directly to a Hangout with anybody I'm hanging out with. I can also send it to an inbox as email. And same thing with Gmail. So you can you know send your keep deal as a Gmail uh, email message. I can even create an, a copy of it by sending it to keep, which is a little ridiculous, but they give you ability to do it anyway. And then I can also send it to copy, to copy the clipboard in case you want to use another app. Uh, you can send it to Google Drive, which will just create a document that has the uh, the information to note there. Uh, I don't know what it does with LinkedIn. You can create a pin on Pinterest, as you can see right there. And one of the coolest things you can do with this thing, in addition to all these other apps, uh, some have value, some don't, is the ability to say, uh, to say something like Skitch. And Skitch is a program that allows you to annotate graphics. And web pages, things like that. So if I send it to Sketch, uh, one second, let me just do it. Second, for some reason, Skitch is behaving differently right now. I'm not exactly sure why. Let's 
that's okay. There's something screwed up with the sketch thing, so I can't show you right now, uh, unfortunately, because it doesn't let me select it for whatever reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a version of it that's a little different on my own phone, on LG G3, that does essentially the same thing. So it drops the information into you know the program, and I can go and actually work on it, write something on it, if I wanted to. So I'm going to put this little red line here, and, you know, some more stuff, you can sketch whatever you want. And then, of course, you can either save it or you can share it then through email or anything else, or you can just save it as an image, and then you can do whatever you want to do with it. So that's one of the nice things about this, that you can actually take a picture of something, and then you can go and send it to a program like Sketch or like this program uh, here, and then you can annotate it any way you want, and then you can email it to somebody else. So it makes it very, very compelling, really, really excellent to be able to do that kind of stuff. Sorry about the sketch not working right now. I don't know what the deal with that is. Normally, it should should work with sketch. You can like put in some lines or arrows or things like that. So it makes it very so the send is definitely an excellent capability of the of um, this whole environment to be able to take information and uh, send it to one of these applications. So if I want to just show an example with email, for example, I take this note here and I click on send and Gmail. Let's see, show you. And what it does, it actually shows um, the note in Gmail. It's got the graphics. All the images are attached right there, as you can see. And all I have to do is put in who I'm sending it to. I'm just going to put my name. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on send. And so then it sends it. That's it. So now if I go back to my uh, email, Then it says right here, Oleg share with you. That's the one I shared before. And the new one is right here. So right here, this is what the email actually looks like. See, it's got my name in the subject. It's got the same name I had in the note header. And then it's got um, all the items I put in. So it shows them like a little checklist deals right in the email. And then it's got the actual images that I got. So that's the way emails come in, if you want to share it like that. So very, very, the send capability is great to be able to easily share something with another app. And you can use Inbox, you can use Gmail, you can use Google+, Plus, and all this stuff works equally well. Uh, Sketch, for some reason, is acting out, but try it. It should work as well. I think I might have to upgrade it or something. Maybe they just upgraded it. So that's the mobile thing. And um, let me jump here to... Back to the same note here. Jump back to display. Okay, so So we got the sound, we talked about that. So in terms of the keyboard, you have ability to um, do all kinds of shortcuts. And one of the shortcuts is C, just like in Gmail and Inbox, to compose new note, in this case. Pound sign, Shift 3, allows you to delete a note. So that's the delete part. Of course, you can pull down menu and do the same thing, but it makes it a little bit easier. Then we've got slash, which allows you to jump right to the search box, start typing your search. Then control G, which is kind of useful too. And so control G winds up giving you either the display that looks like this. Let me just pull up a bunch of notes. And you can see that we have all these notes nicely arranged in a single one note at a time going down. Or you hit the grid view, control G stands for grid view, which shows you multiple notes at the same time, uh, horizontal. So that's the difference between the grid view and regular view. 
I personally like this one. But, you know, if somebody wants the other one, that's convenient for them. That's fine. And so the idea is that you use the, uh, the different keys, and then you use the escape key to just jump out. If you're editing a particular note, you click on it. You're working on it. When you're done, you have a couple of choices. You can either um, click on done, which is the button right down here, or you can hit the escape key, or you can uh, click anywhere outside of the note. Usually, you can just escape key and gets out. And it automatically saves. You don't have to worry about saving, so that part looks great. So that's you know really slick in that way. Uh, one more thing that we didn't discuss initially is keep in mind that everything you do in Google Keep, in terms of searching, it's doing it using OCR. It does what they call optical character recognition, meaning it's able to read text that's within graphics. OK? Case in point, I just typed in the word Kirkland, and this note came up. Notice that I don't have anywhere here the words Kirkland. The only way I have Kirkland is in this graphics, I mean this graphic, which is a, a screenshot from my phone from a while back that had the word Kirkland written in there, OK? And that's the reason it pulled it up. Notice over here, I have I have no nothing that says calculator here, right? Nothing. It just calculator is one of the graphics here that says calculator. So it's the same thing. If I actually type in calculator here, it would, again, it will come up in that because that's that's what stuff is. Uh, it's it's one of the graphical deals there, and so that's why it shows up. So I also have, for example, have a bunch of business cards. I, I never take business cards any longer because all my business cards are, you know, uh, orange and they're all stored in archives. So I don't have to look at them. I just bring them up when I do a search. But the idea here is, in my case, I use the word business card. I don't have to. I can actually type in like, uh, uh, you know, any of the information on the card would come up. It would just come up and the information is there. So speaking of business cards, you know, one other feature we didn't discuss is ability to grab the information from uh, the actual graphic and then dump it directly into the note. The reason it's important is because if you're going to start doing Google Documents, you probably want the text to be text, not to be graphical, so you can work on it. So what, what you can do is you can actually take, we'll just do it, uh, let's just do, I'll just do it in real time here. So I have this, you know, magazine that had some ads in it, you know, just a regular kind of advertising magazine. And one of my ads that's in there, they did a while back. So we're just going to take a picture. So I'm going to go to Keep, go to Google Keep. I'm going to go ahead and click on. Um, it's kind of hard to play both. So I'm just going to pick up just to show you. So I'm going to click on this and click on the camera. And I'm going to say I'm going to take a photo. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click, pull up the ad here, and just grab as much of it as I can. I don't really care about everything. And notice that none of, not, not all of this is perfect. If you look at, at the deal, I'll show you on the screen in a minute. So I'm just going to click on OK. And I'm going to say this is, we'll call it the um, Keep Hangout Test. And uh, See if it works. Okay, and then I basically just get out of the note. It's back to all my notes. And then let's go ahead and get out of the, um, go back to screen share and see what we got here. So now, as you can see, immediately, even though it's only been a couple of seconds, this particular uh, keep hanging out test, you know, it's there. Okay, it doesn't have my line that I added of text afterwards, but I'm sure it'll come up shortly here. Okay, as soon as it does its next update, it'll come up. So I'm going to click on it. It'll come up. And I'm looking to see, you know, if you can find words like restaurants, for example. Let's see how good this thing is. So if I go ahead and don't do anything, just type in the word restaurants, what is it that comes up? As amazing as it is. Okay? Now let's look at another thing. Over here it says Hunan Walk. You see that? It says Hunan Walk. Um, and it's got the special background and all that. Let's see if it's capable to do that. As the guy said in the commercial, uh, Vince guy said, Are you following me, cameraman? Okay, let's step in and walk. Uh, 
So apparently, it definitely has some limitations as to what it can find. And it couldn't find that. Um, let's see now. See, now it's got this updated. Let's see if it works. How about Santa Fe or Mexican Grill? Let's try Mexican Grill and see that can do that. Mexican Grill. Yeah, found it. They found Mexican Grill as well. So as you can see, you know, if I use the word convenient, finds it as well. Right there, the word convenient. Um, if I type the word online, let's, let's see if it finds the word online. It finds the word online as well, which is right here, which is vertical, actually. It's not on horizontal. So as you can see, it's amazing in terms of what it can do, considering the fact that I'm looking for the word online, which is right here, vertical. I mean, I don't think they have any, I don't think they have horizontal online here. Yeah, and it still found it. It still was able to, to find it. So it's definitely very capable, just not everything everywhere. But for the most part, as you can see, it does a really, really good job uh, trying to find um, information. So keep that in mind. You don't have to. But if if you um, have the text and you're looking for it, you found it, it's great. But if you want to create a Google Doc and start working from it, what you probably want to do is take this text that's there and then start working from that point. So they have a feature here called um, grab image text. If you pull on a... Um, pull up the note and then you can select grab image text. It's going to go ahead and grab the text and whatever it can read, it will stick in there. And you can see it doesn't do a perfect job on everything. It's got this scan AMRO, which of course is not not exactly what it says here. But, you know, select from a growing list of local restaurants including. Okay? And this was text that was even bent a little bit and slanted. And still it was able to read it just fine and put it exactly how it is. Okay? So the bottom line here is that it does do a pretty exceptional job in reading text from the graphical uh, information. And then you can, of course, go in and edit it any way you want. You can delete things. You can um, go here, it says Hunan Wall, so you change it to Hunan Walk, and so on and so forth. So you can, you know, it's just text, so you can change it anything, do anything you want. And then when you get done, then you can go and copy it to Google Doc and take it from there. So very, very capable amazing ability to be able to read graphical text and then you can dump it directly into the um, into the node itself and then you can export it to Google Doc and basically sky's the limit when you work with this stuff. So that's another important thing that a lot of people don't even know you can do this with uh, Google Keep and it's a phenomenal capability to do that kind of stuff. Now let's look at um, back to see what else we need to cover. Let's see what we're at here in this little feature. So we've got escape. And by the way, if you want to know what all the control keys, keyboard shortcuts, um, and different controls and things like that, you use the question mark character. So when you pull up, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on question mark. And you'll notice that it comes up with this uh, keyboard shortcuts display, very similar to Gmail. And the display shows, you know, you can navigate previous next node. You know, the compose search, you can select all notes. I mean, I give you kind of the ones that I think are very important um, that you'd be using a lot. You, you can use the other ones as well, obviously. So that's that. And um, let's see what we got here. So we got here, we got that. So we covered the keyboard shortcuts. Next thing we're going to cover. Yeah, let's just do bookmarks and it'll be done. I kind of show you the demo anyway. We won't do the demo, so also the demo is done. Um, and so let's go ahead and talk about bookmarks. So, what is extremely cool with this whole setup with uh, Google Keep is the URLs. What I mean by that is pretty much anything you do in Google Keep winds up having a different URL on it. So when you initially start Google Keep, it comes up with you know, URL looks like this. You go to keep.google.com and it comes up with what it comes up with, right? But let's say that I, like I told you, I use blue, for example, uh, I use blue color notes for um, blue backgrounds, I mean, for to-do list. Let's say you wanted to be able to start up the keep and go right to to-do. So you have to click on this and click on blue and now you, you got it. It gets tedious to keep selecting this every single time. I mean, you just want to be able to go and do it. And so the nice thing about that is that Google has all the different URLs with information shown there that indicates exactly what you want 
all you have to do is just create bookmarks with it. And so in my case, I have this little pull down here. It says Google Keep. And I have all the different things in here. So if I wanted to do my to-do, let's say, let's get rid of this so you can see what I'm talking about. All I have to do now is that when I pull up Google Keep, I simply go to uh, to-do and boom, there's my to-do list. If I want to pull up everything for a label called Reef, I click Reef, and there's all my Reef stuff. I want to pull up, um, okay. Another thing that I, that I mentioned to you that I have a specific color for a specific purpose. And of course, I can't remember all these, even just eight colors. So even though I remember blue, I don't remember the rest of them. So I set up a little note where I put in the information about what each color represents. I called it legend. So I could type in legend, or I got it set up right here where I can simply click on it, and it actually pulls up a card that says Google Keep Legend, and it shows me different colors and what they mean. So at any point in time, even if I do have the whole thing closed, I can pull up um, a new tab, and then I can go ahead to Google Keep, and I can say, show me the legend. And it's going to automatically pull up Google Keep, and I'm not clicking on anything, and it's going to automatically pull up my legend and show me exactly um, what the situation is with that particular card. So you can do the same thing. You can have as many bookmarks as you want. They can be searches. They can be you know individual cards. You simply need to copy the URL, whatever you actually put in the search and come up with what you want, then copy the URL and bookmark it. You know, hit Control D to bookmark it. And if you use Google's bookmarks, you know, it makes it also pretty simple. Then when you go to Google's bookmarks, like right here, I have my Google Keep folder. If you click on it, it will show you all your different things right there in these you know clickable um, boxes. And so you can do either way. You can have it on the bookmarks uh, toolbar here up at the top. You can select it from there, or have the same thing from from here in big buttons. And if I want to pull it up, you just click on it and pulls it up in your window. And uh, there is all my stuff related to force. Apparently only one note right now. Okay, so that's basically um, what I wanted to bring up in terms of the new capabilities, you know, which being the recurring um, reminders, labels, um, these different mobile variations, and um, and uh, using all these different features just make this a very compelling program. If you have any specific questions, you can grab me on uh, Google Plus at any time. Contact me. I'm very easy, easily found, and I'll be happy to help you with that. But do take a look at it. If you need to keep track of information in a very simple way without resorting to databases and things like that, and be able to manage lists, manage people, uh, keep track of where things are at in terms of different lists, uh, you know, using for even simple things like shopping lists, something for kids. I mean, there's a zillion different applications you can potentially do. And then this ability with, being using, with using labels and being able to easily search for stuff and using background colors and all that, ability to add notes using voice. You're out on a sales call somewhere. You're talking to somebody. You can just create a note by just simply talking into your phone, and then you can edit it later with whatever you wish. You can take a picture, you know, add additional information to the picture if you want, or multiple pictures, create a note, then dump into Google Doc, share it with whomever you want, you start working on it. I mean, it's a phenomenal kind of starting point, as well as being able to uh, use it for a lot of things. Project management, another thing comes to mind, where you can have you know projects segregated into various cards. Some will be checklists, some will be free, you know, free form. They can have pictures, they can have status information, they can have. I mean, it's like I said, it's almost like an unlimited uh, wealth of things you can do with Google Keep. The program is free. It's available on all the platforms, uh, so you can run it on. Uh, or well, maybe I take it back. I'm not sure if they came out with iOS version yet, but definitely available on Android and uh, Chromebox. As it works fine on Chromebooks, and it works fine on uh, PC desktops. And of course, you can, you know, on the if you're on the Mac side, then I'm sure you can pull it up on your Mac. It's just the, I don't think they have the iOS native version just yet. But my guess is it'll come out with it at some point in time. So um, I think we're done. I appreciate you taking the time to. Watch this, and until uh, next time, bye.